introduced, and he had 100 yards on the day. And so on a weekend that no one will ever forget in Kansas City, somehow, somewhere, the Chiefs win 27-21, and Romeo Cornell tried afterwards uh, to talk about it. We're grieving for all involved. Um, and so uh, it's, it's tough when circumstances happen. You can't undo them. Um, and so you have to rely on each other, rely on your family, your friends, and rely on your faith. And uh, that's what the team tried to do. Um, today and, and we were able to, to do that and try to work our way through uh, the tragedy. And knowing that it's not over today, it still will go on tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, um, but uh, life is going to go on as well and we have to work through it. And so that's what we're going to try to do. It was tough, you know. Um, uh, it, it really hit me this morning, you know, waking up, uh, not being able to, to uh, Talk to Javon. Uh, being a being the middle backer, being the, the heart of this defense, that's who I talk to all the time, you know. Uh, and it was um, it's kind of tough, you know. It hit me uh, going to the stadium, uh, really emotional going to the stadium uh, this morning. But uh, uh, knew we had to pull together. I knew, uh, you know, he's a he's a guy that's really strong, strong-minded guy. So I knew he he would want us to, you know, pull together and uh, get a win. It's a uh, eerie feeling after a win because you don't feel like you can win in this situation. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> the, the one thing is hopefully people can, um, you know, try to take away that, uh, I guess, the relationships they have with people, you know. Um, you know, I know when it happened, I was sitting in my head thinking, what could I have done different? Um, you know, when you ask someone how they're doing, do you really mean it? When you answer someone back, how are you doing? Are, are you really telling them the truth? Um, you know, we live in a society of social networks and Twitter pages and Facebook, and that's that's fine and stuff. But you know, we have contact with our work associates, our family, our friends, and um, yeah, it seems like half the time we're more preoccupied with our phone and other things going on instead of the actual relationships we have in front of us. And hopefully, people can well learn from this and try to actually figure out if someone's battling something, you know, deeper on the inside than what they may be. Hear that, everybody? On a day-to-day -day basis. Pretty quick. Up, Notre Dame. Pretty amazing words from Brady, yes. pretty amazing words from uh, Derek, and of course, pretty amazing uh, job, and uh, Romeo Cornell, I don't know, I mean, none of us know we, what we would do in that, nor do you out there would do, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys, and commend the Chiefs, and by the way, the Panthers had to kind of take their cue from the Chiefs a little bit, we said that this morning, mm -hmm, Tom, I mean, mm -hmm, absolutely. how do we play this, we don't want to be the only, you know, so there's no book on it, and the Chiefs won the game, and... Um, it's one that whoever is a chief after this year, and whoever it, it, it Kansas City Chief fans for a long time will think of those guys on the field and, and, the, and the coach and the GM and what they did. Pretty impressive. I, impressive in the midst of a, a very tragic situation. The team came out and showed, I believe, the kind of professionals that they were. Uh, they took the field. They played, uh, I believe, their best game of the year. Uh, they ran the ball well, as, as Boom stated. Uh, Brady Quinn, 19 of 23. I have not known him to have a better day uh, playing the quarterback position. Uh, they had zero turnovers, one penalty. And, and, and now we're just talking football. Uh, if you're Romeo Cornell, yes, you are impressed with what your guys did. But, but I also, uh, Romeo being such a good guy, uh, and the opportunity to be a good coach. I, I, I want to see, regardless of circumstances, mm -hmm. I would like to see these guys, because you've shown me you can do it, uh, go out and play like this. Go out and play like this. If you can play like this, then go out and play like this. There's going to be a lot of why being asked after this weekend. Sure, mm -hmm. real life. Obviously, real life. Real life why. Real life. Freddie Quinn uh, so eloquently um, elaborated on. Mm -hmm. But then the whys of football. Why? Why as a professional athlete can you compartmentalize something like this and, and go out and, and play your best football? And it's probably out their best football. I mean, their best team. football game. Brady Quinn plays his best football. They're three for three in the red zone. Zero turnovers, <laughs> one penalty. I mean, stuff we haven't seen from the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so from an organizational standpoint, why can our players handle something like this, something so traumatic mm -hmm. that goes on? And then why can they go out and play their best football? I, 
I'm at a loss just for words the whole situation, but especially what I saw today from the Chiefs, how they were able to compartmentalize this these tragic events of yesterday and go out and play the best football is beyond me. You know, it, it, it's such a, an ironic and, and usual circumstance that we take when these situations arise, and this is going to happen 3,500 times this year, a situation like this will arise, a murder, suicide, 3,500 times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 3,499 of them are not going to be professional right. football players who right. have this right. this type of attention. And so because of that, we can overanalyze yes. what happened on the football field, how these players are able to do that and deal with this type of situation. You know, I think the best thing we can do in handling this is just say Cassandra Perkins. You know? Yes, it's, absolutely. There's a, there's a victim in this. There's two families that are victims in this. But Cassandra Perkins was gunned down at the age of 22. Her, her life was taken. And you, I mean, that's the only thing that that you can really concentrate on. That's the reality. And Zoe Belcher will never know her parents. Will never know her parents. Uh, it, it, yeah. There's, there's, it's an upset. You're right, and it's not about how do we heal those folks, keep them in their thought, keep them in all of our thoughts moving forward. There's nothing really to say except no. that why this happened. Um, we don't know, but the professionalism that you speak to. Yes, it's amazing. It's nice to see. Uh, in, in that regard, and, and Romeo Cornell, Scott Pioli witnessed it, witnessed the, the end of it. Hats off to you. And. Uh